In this video, I tell you about three new weird products that I use in my wargaming hobby all the time. You might have a few of them in your house already. About six months ago, I made a video about weird non-hobby tools that'll change your hobby. Talking about exactly what it said on the tin, basically, for the video. Four items that I use specifically for my work in the wargaming hobby. Building and painting miniatures and terrain, all that kind of stuff. And these things aren't really known for being hobby products. That video did really well for some reason, and maybe hit some sort of nerve, I suppose. If you want to check it out, pachow. But I started thinking about other weird products I use for my hobby, and I figured I'd share these with you as well. I literally started thinking about making the second video while I was actually using this first product. It kind of sparked the whole idea for this video. It's called an Ono Roller. Ono, I think, is the brand. O-N-O. -O. And it's marketed as a handheld fidget toy for adults. I think the for adults thing is because it's made out of metal. It's not plastic, right? Now, the big product from the last video was also a fidget toy, a silicone fidget popper for using as like a speed paint and wash palette. But that's not how this fidget toy is used. Honestly, it's more for dealing with the effects of the hobby rather than the hobby itself. Spoiler alert, I'm old. Also, none of us is getting any younger, just FYI. When I'm painting for long periods of time on projects, sometimes I can get sore hands or even hand cramps from like holding the brush, right? You know, like when you're really trying to make sure you can paint that one specific thing and you catch the face in just the right way and you're just really, and you know, especially if you're painting for hours, you can get hand cramps. It also happens on the computer if I'm typing a lot and especially if I'm like playing a first person shooter for an, expen an extended period of time, you know, on the keyboard, that WASD and the just clutching the mouse like that. It, yeah, uh, this is why I'm generally playing more controller type video games these days when I do play video games. But when my hands start to get sore from painting or whatever, I reach for this thing to, to, to help. And it really does. Now, I'm not a doctor, so this isn't medical advice, right? There are probably like special medical exercising devices that are supposed to help with hand pain from extended hand usage, you know, like we all do in miniature painting and stuff like that. But I'll bet that those things are really, really expensive as well. This thing's only kind of expensive. It's like 35 bucks when I got mine, but it's all aluminum, every part of it, even like the top part and all that kind of stuff. And it's really smooth and satisfying to use. It's, it's, it's well-made and it's really quiet too. Listen to this. Like there's like, it, there's no clacking and just scraping or anything like that. It works out really well like that. And when I use it, when my hand gets sore, it really helps to kind of loosen things up and make my hands feel better. I don't know that I'm much of an actual fidgeter myself, right? So maybe I'm not using this for its intended purpose. Yes, I'll admit I do talk with my hands a lot, but when I'm quiet, I usually sit pretty still. But if you have sore hands from painting or gaming or whatever it is you're doing, and you might get some benefit for having something, you know, to focus your fidgety energy on, then this might be twice as useful to you. It's very well built, really quiet, and maybe something that you'd like to check out if your hands get sore from painting like mine do. This next thing works great for me, but might not necessarily work great for you. It kind of depends. I think the concept is strong, however. Organization is key in the miniature hobby. Having a place to keep stuff and find it again quickly is what keeps you painting and not constantly digging around through boxes and all kinds of stuff like that, searching for either a model or a tool or a paint pot or whatever it is that you're looking for. Having this storage be nearby within arm's reach of your hobby area is also useful. And having it be pretty cheap is also really nice as well. That's where this next item comes into play, hanging closet organizers. Now, before you say, but Uncle Adam, I don't paint in a closet. I mean, sure, yeah, most people don't. Some folks actually do, I suspect. And I bet it can be pretty convenient to just close the sliding doors when you're done painting for the night and then, 
you don't have to see it anymore. And then when you come back later, you open it back up again. That's probably actually kind of nice. I don't paint in a closet either, admittedly. You know, I paint in a basement. The reason I love my hanging closet organizer, however, is because it hangs. This frees up the space underneath for like a wastebasket or maybe more storage or whatever you want. And because it's hanging from the ceiling, it's up higher and easier to reach. So you don't have to like bend down as much because again, you know, old. Also, most of these like closet organizers are really cheap in comparison to say an actual shelving unit made out of press board or whatever, you know? And if you move a lot from apartment to apartment or whatever, I'll bet that they're also really easy to fold down and move with, much more than another piece of furniture. I got mine someplace local like Target or somewhere, but I'll put some nice options from Amazon in the description down below if you can't find any near you. They're usually designed for clothes or shoes, of course. So the bottoms uh, are of each shelf kind of part, you know, are usually kind of, you know, frequently they're like cloth and they're flexible, which means that they'll kind of bow like this. This kind of makes it hard to put miniatures and other small objects in there without, you know, uh, having them sort of tip over because everything's sort of soft and squishy. But I got an answer to that. Some of these hanging uh, closet organizers have hard, you know, shelves for lack of a better word, and they will keep your stuff from tipping over like the softer shelves will as they bend and bow and whatnot. Some that you find have hard shelves made out of either like a plastic or MDF, but they're generally a bit more expensive. The one I bought has soft shelves, so I just cut some corrugated cardboard to fit in there, like pretty much real snug, and to keep the shelves flat and useful. To be extra sturdy, cut two pieces of corrugated per shelf and like hot glue them together, that'll make the, 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 the cardboard harder to bend. And if you're real smart, cut them so that the corrugate goes one way on this way and the other way on that way, and then they'll be incredibly sturdy when you, sturdy when you glue them. The hardest part can be finding a way to hang it from the ceiling, you know, if, if you don't actually paint in a closet, as I mentioned earlier. Many of them have metal hooks to go on the clothes pole in the closet. I think that's what you call that thing. So if you can sink like reliable hooks into the ceiling, you know, then you can hang this thing, you know, hook to hook with relative ease and it works out pretty well. Or maybe if you can attach something that sticks out of the wall for the hooks to hang from, like a bracket for shelving and stuff like that, you know, then that could be something to hang it off of. Or if you're like me and you do all your hobbying in an unfinished basement, then you have exposed floor joists above your head and the world is your oyster for hanging hooks and all kinds of stuff like that. Lastly, something I use all the time in building miniatures, but not so much in painting them, little clamps. You probably saw a lot of them uh, clipped to my hanging closet organizer thingy in the last section, you know, clipped along the sides and stuff like that. It's actually a really good place to put them to make them very quickly accessible, by the way. It keeps them available, but not cluttering up your hobby desk or in some drawer where they're out of sight, out of mind, or whatever. But the more important question is probably this. What do you use them for? Well, I'll tell you, glue doesn't ever set as quickly as you'd like, especially when you're trying to glue like two difficult pieces together. Doesn't matter if it's plastic cement or super glue, it always takes longer than you'd like for glue to set. Unless the, you made a mistake and didn't mean to glue those two parts to each other, then it'll set like super quickly. That's generally the way it works. Another fact that relates to hobby building, most of us have at most only two hands. Some folks have fewer, right? But frequently when building miniatures with glue, you need an extra hand that has a lot of patience to wait for the glue to set. That's exactly what these little clamps are great for. Not every clamp will work in every situation. And, and frankly, this is why I have many different shapes and styles of clamps available to me, to raise the odds that one of them will properly hold the thing I'm trying to hold together while the glue sets. But when I need to hold two parts together for the glue to eventually set, especially on vehicles and terrain, but even on regular you know, figure miniatures as well sometimes, being able to use one or several of these little clamps is a godsend. If you've ever had to hold two parts together for three or four minutes just to find that they then did not glue to each other, but they did glue to your fingers, 
Rubber bands will sometimes work for this kind of thing, especially if the item is big, you know, like maybe a big vehicle, like you're trying to glue a rhino together, something like that. But rubber bands have a tendency to spread out the pressure around the entirety of the band. You know, frequently you just need to hold two parts together in kind of like a localized area, and these clamps will usually do the job. Also, you can sometimes use them almost like little tripods if you have to like hold a piece up for some reason, like to let it dry in a certain way or something like that. You just kind of clip onto one part and then use it as sort of like a the rest and then it just will just it'll just stand there and you won't have to worry about it. Like there's there's tons of uses for these little clamps and the best part is that they're generally super cheap and easy to store, so you might want to get some for yourself. So those are three more weird non-hobby tools to help you in your miniature wargaming hobby. If you think that one of these might help you out and you can't find them locally, then check out the affiliate links I've put down in the description below. And, and while you're down there, check out my Amazon store of other weird hobby products as well. What kinds of like weird hobby products do you use in your miniature building or painting? Let me and obviously other folks as well know down in the comments section down there underneath the uh, the video. Lastly, hit the like button to help spread this video around and to help the channel and me out. I appreciate it. And also subscribe to see more videos every single Friday. And thanks for watching.